What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to build a $700 gaming PC that you can actually buy the parts for. Stock and everything right now is insane but this system should be pretty easy to find and get each of the components. I'm not only going to run you through all the parts and the build process before testing it out with around 15 of the latest AAA titles and most popular games. So without any further ado let's dive into it after a quick word from today's video sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Have you ever dreamed of having a triple A quality game right in your pocket that you can pick up and play anytime? Well with Raid Shadow Legends you can do just that. I really like the realistic fantasy graphics you see as you go through saving the world of Teleria fighting the boss battles with the epic rare champions you've collected is just so satisfying. And this month, the biggest raid update ever is out. The main event is already live where you can explore a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret rooms and 12 seriously epic bosses to take on along the way. But don't do this alone because raid is giving you a super special champion bulwark to help you out against the tower bosses. He's awesome in clan boss and I've got to say he looks great. If you want to get Get a huge head start in raid head to the first link in the description below and claim your free void champion and xp booster 50 gems energy refills and even an ancient shard as soon as you get in the game they'll all be yours remember though to claim this epic reward you've got to download raid from the first link in the description below give it a go and play raid shadow legends today back to the build though as with all of my builds we're going to kick things off by actually installing our motherboard and cpu alongside our ram before coming back to the case and some of the other components a little bit later. Now for the motherboard today I've actually gone down the B550 route. Specifically the motherboard I've selected is MSI's MAG B550M Mortar. It's got a couple of really great features that I like including a built-in rear IO shield, an M.2 heatsink as well as importantly four RAM dim slots. First though before we do the RAM we're going to install the CPU today. This is the AMD Ryzen 3 3100. It's an incredibly capable chip with four cores and eight threads, and some really fast single and multi-threaded speeds. In order to install this, you just need to locate the triangle on your CPU socket, which you're gonna find about here. Line this up with the corresponding triangle on the top right-hand corner of our processor today, and then it's a simple case of pulling the arm up and dropping the CPU nice and gently into place. There we go, pop the arm back down, and because it's an AMD socket, even if you go and do that, it's not gonna fall out. Next, then we need to install the cooler. There's no easier cooler to to find than a stock cooler and that's because it comes included with the box of your CPU. It's a really great choice for a more value oriented build. Normally your cooler will come with pre-applied thermal paste but because I've used mine before I just need to dab a little bit of my own. Remember to take off this pre-installed plastic mounting hardware and then the cooler is going to screw down a little something like this into the pre-installed back plate. Cool with our CPU cooler installed we're going to spin the motherboard around and next install our RAM or our memory today. I've gone for a 36 megahertz kit of Kingston's HyperX Fury RGB. As you can see here, it's got a gold notch at the top with some RGB at the bottom, which is going to look really cool later. And we just need to line this notch up with the corresponding notches on the motherboard. But James, there's four RAM DIMM slots. Which ones do we need to use? Well, it is technically slots one and three because the first slot is slot zero. So basically it's the second and fourth slot. You then want to line that notch up, as I say, with the corresponding notch on the motherboard. And then that is going to drop nicely into place. Apply even pressure to either side of your RAM DIMM. And just like that, this great value RGB kit is well, it's all installed really, isn't it? With that now done, our actual motherboard assembly, as we're going to call it, is complete. And we can go ahead and move this into our case today. It's a brand new chassis from BitPhoenix, specifically the Nova Mesh SET. G. Okay, that's a little bit cooler than I thought it was going to be actually. So around the back, we have got enough PCIe slots for a full size ATX motherboard, but the case is quite tight. So you'll see in a second why I've not opted to go for a full size ATX board. We've also got a real deal, ow, a real deal tempered glass side panel at the top here. We've got a couple of USB 3 ports, a headphone and mic jack. Oh, an LED button. We like an LED button and our power button. Wait for it. Are we ready? Hmm. Five out of ten, underwhelming peel. 
Four out of 10, that was even worse. Now around the back, what we're after is this bag of screws and cables. In here, you'll find everything that you need to basically install and secure the motherboard into the chassis itself. Before that though, we just need to make sure that we've got all the right standoffs installed in the case. To do that, find each of the holes through your actual motherboard located here, and then check these up with the corresponding standoffs in your chassis. We've actually got a couple that need moving, so we're gonna take these two out the bottom and put one of them up here one of them down there and then take one of the bonus standoffs and put that in here and that's going to make sure we've got a standoff under each of the correct locations and secure our motherboard into place once we've done that then we can go ahead and screw our motherboard in and to do that we're going to use these included screws and the motherboard screws in in the following seven locations a little something like this all right then the motherboard is now in the case and i think actually despite it being the smaller size it fits quite well all we need to do now then is install the graphics card the power supply, but first our SSD, our storage choice today. I've gone for a 500 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda Q1 drive. There are really good NVMe options available from Seagate as well, but they are going to add quite a bit more onto the price point. Installing the SSD is not too difficult today. We do actually need to lay the case down flat though, and actually go ahead and remove these four screws, which hold the storage drive cage nicely into place. The drive cage looks a little something like this. It's pretty simple, pretty basic, but we can actually just go ahead and pop the SSD nicely on top. If you see here that the four screw holes line nicely into place. I think it's going to be easier to screw this down once the drive is placed on the table and just pop those four screws in and we're pretty much good to go. Nice, the SSD is now in. We're going to cable it up a little bit later, but first let's go ahead and install the power supply. Now in terms of kind of the power supply's overall design, it's pretty simple, pretty small, pretty compact and has all the cables you could ever wish for in terms of installing extra drives, another graphics card, a more power hungry motherboard, all that good stuff. We're going to install it with our fan facing downwards today. So just watch and make sure that you put this case on an area with enough clearance. Put this on a thick rug with the power supply facing downwards and you're going to starve it of air, which is never a good idea. With the power supply in then, we're just going to do a couple of our cables and wiring before going ahead and actually installing the graphics card today. We're going to install our CPU power first up to the top left of the motherboard with this cable and that goes in a little something like this. The motherboard power cable is next it goes to the right hand side of the motherboard and it's the largest power cable of the bunch today it will only go in one way around so just be careful don't force it and if it doesn't go in try again next up then is our front panel connectors for our usb ports our power button all that good stuff usb 3 is first up the largest of the front panel cables today and is notched so we'll only go in one way around the pins are on the motherboard as well so just be a little bit careful that these don't get bent hd audio then is the second cable today it goes to the bottom left of the motherboard and make sure our headphone and mic jacks work a-okay that goes to the bottom left corner of the motherboard finally then are our jfp1 connectors aka the little pins for you know our power reset or the indicator leds and all that good stuff these are by far the trickiest of any cable to install so be careful don't rush it take your time and if you get them wrong nothing will explode your system just won't turn on stop 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 i have forgotten two of our cables today and that is of course for our ssd it's not going to work if we don't plug it in. The first of those cables is a SATA data cable. Uh, this is identical on either side and one end goes to the motherboard and the other end into our SSD. There we go and then that just threads through to the motherboard. Lovely jubbly and then we also need to give it power and to do that we're going to use one of these, a SATA power connector. So let's spin that case back around again and then pop the power cable in. That brings us nicely on to the graphics card. Oh, my heart's beating. This is the MSI GTX 1660 Super, and this is a 1080p machine. It is an absolute beast for 1080p high frame rate gaming. As I said earlier, a little bit later, we'll be testing it out with around 15 of the most popular titles, but I'll link a playlist below where you can find raw benchmarks, so the full kind of 10 minute game clips on a new channel, which you should definitely subscribe to called Benched. It's a really nice cooler. It's got two fans on it which is going to be better than some of the one fan variants that might be a little bit cheaper but will limit you on overclocking headroom or boost clock speeds once again line up that golden slot on your graphics card with the corresponding pcie slot on your motherboard make sure that retention clip is pushed back and then it'll simply click into place use the same screw that we removed just a second ago to actually secure the gpu in and then simply power our graphics card up let's do that now and with that that basically completely 
police our build today. Before we boot this machine up to see just how well it performs, let's see how good this thing looks when it's all powered up in an epic glam montage. Roll the clip. <laughs> Right then, now we've seen just how good this system looks when it's all powered up, let's take a dive and see exactly how it performs. On your screen now are all the performance numbers we gathered from this machine, testing in around 15 of the most popular and latest AAA titles. We're going to take a deeper dive into seven of these games in just a second, from GTA to Cyberpunk and Fortnite, to see exactly how we got these frames per second. But remember, for full 10 minute clips of every game, check out the playlist in the cards now over on our benched YouTube channel. The first of those games we're going to take a closer look at is GTA 5. The game's inbuilt bench marking mode at 1080p normal sort of medium settings gave us some really impressive results. 135, 127 and 114 FPS for the average 90 and 99th percentiles. Overwatch is next up today then, and here at 1080p high settings this time, not medium, uh, the game performed really well. 145 frames per second on average with 130 and 120 for the 90 and 99th percentile result gives us esports level frame rates on a machine that really sits more in the budget category. The Watchdog Legion's in-game benchmark mode is our next test today. 1080p medium to high settings gives us 83, 78 and 74 frames per second, but of course no rate tracing or DLSS supported in this game by the GTX range of graphics cards, so that's not in the equation today. One game that is in the equation today though is Call of Duty's new Cold War title. Here in the multiplayer zombies mode we got some really great results again, 95, 82 and 78 frames per second for the average 90 and 99th percentile results at 1080p normal settings. Apex Legends is next up today then, one of my personal favourite titles, 112 FPS on average at 1080p medium with 91 and 82 and the game looked really great. Once again, esports level performance on a more budget oriented system. Talking of, I was going to say esports level performance and high frame rates, but maybe not. Let's try Cyberpunk next. 1080p medium in the game that is notoriously hard to run and of course no DLSS support to help us out either. Here at 1080p medium, the game looked good, but the frame rate wasn't great. 59, 54 and 46. That's no bad representation of this system. System, more just how buggy and difficult to run Cyberpunk really can be. Finally then, the last game today is Fortnite. We tested it both 1080p high and then 1080p competitive settings, basically low but with the render distance set to high. First at high settings we saw 104, 89 and 75 for the average 90 and 99th percentile result with 1080p competitive settings giving us a really nice upside of 150, 134 and 125. These are some really competitive settings and a really competitive frame rate which make Fortnite a great gaming experience on this system. But with that being said that pretty much wraps it up for both the gaming benchmarks and the whole video today. If you did enjoy it drop a like right and make sure to get subscribed thank you for watching though and as always we hope to see you in the next one